Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. The Book of Boba Fett is just under one month away and to celebrate I thought I'd make a very different kind of video. With the big connections that Lucasfilm is trying to draw between animated and live action series, I thought it would be fun to list every clone still alive during the time of the Mandalorian, five years after the Battle of Endor. Now I will say that every character in this video is canon, so I've excluded all clones in Legends. Now this video is not implying that any of these are going to appear in the Book of Boba Fett, although anything is a possibility. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. We begin with fan favourite Captain Rex, who had a major role in the Clone Wars and had a reoccurring supporting role in Star Wars Rebels. Thanks to Ahsoka Tano, Rex's inhibitor chip was removed during Order 66, restoring his free will and allowing him to avoid Imperial service. As we see in Star Wars Rebels, Rex was an early member of the Rebel Alliance, putting his extraordinary combat and tactical skills to use against the Empire. Rex fought during the Battle of Endor as a Rebel commander, making him an active combatant throughout the original trilogy, and Rex even has a retroactive cameo in Return of the Jedi, as one of Han Solo's strike team members, strongly implying that the two legendary heroes work together. Now by the time of the Mandalorian universe, Rex is still alive, and while he's very unlikely to appear in the Book of Boba Fett, I think it's a given that Tomorrow Morrison is going to play him in Star Wars Ahsoka. Next up my dear friends, we have another Rebels and Clone Wars fan favourite, Wolf. Fifteen years after the end of the Clone Wars, Wolf was still alive and living in a modified ATTE on Celos with Rex and Gregor. As we see in Rebels, while Gregor did not survive the liberation of Lothal, Commander Wolf did. The Rebels finale left his future open and we simply don't know what became of him, but I suspect if Rex does come into the Ahsoka series, then so will Wolf. Next up, my dear friends, we have a clone who was never seen on screen. We read about a clone called Sergeant Crest in the Tarkin novel. A clone who became a Stormtrooper sergeant during the reign of the Empire. He was formerly a soldier of the Republic during the Clone Wars. He served under Darth Vader and was still alive by the time of the Battle of Endor. Surviving past this, if he does appear in the Mandalorian universe, is he going to be loyal to the Imperial Remnant since the Empire has fallen? Another fan favourite is up next, Cut Laquane. He deserted the clone army and built a family and a farm on Seleucami. We see him again in the Bad Batch Season 1 when Clone Force 99 landed on the planet. Now interestingly enough, while we know nothing about what happened to Cutler Quain after this, he is mentioned as being alive after the Battle of Endor in the Aftermath trilogy, when a farmer by the name of Glenn Trafral mentions that he knows him. He uses Cut as an example of someone who fled the war and as someone who prioritised his family. There is no doubt Cut is still alive during the Mantle in timeline, and I think it'd be amazing if we see him in live action, although pretty unlikely. So next up we have Kix, a very famous clone who many people cite as being the only one still alive during the sequel trilogy. A clone medic in Captain Rex's company, Kix was one of the few clones in Star Wars to discover the clone army's true purpose before Order 66 was even executed. Rather than having him assassinated, Sidious and Dooku had Kix kidnapped and frozen in stasis, where he was then transported to Sereno. During its voyage, however, the Separatist transport carrying Kix went down in battle, leaving the clone stranded on Ponoma Terminal, but Kix remained in stasis throughout the entire original trilogy, eventually being discovered and unfrozen by Sidon Ithano and his pirate crew, and this makes Kix the only clone who was still alive during the First Order era. And finally, my dear friends, we have TX-828, who was better known as Torrent. A fun fact about Torrent, he was the last clone to be born on Kamino. Having had run-ins with Han Solo and Chewie, the story of Torrent is truly fascinating. But as with all of these, we still need to be told what happened to him following the events of the Battle of Endor. I want to give an honourable mention to Commander Cody, and the reason he's not on the list is we simply don't know what happened to him following Order 66. There is too much of a time gap between Order 66 and Return of the Jedi to truly forecast if he survived. I think The Bad Batch Season 2 is going to give us more answers to do with Cody, but if you're interested in hearing what happened to him following the Clone Wars, then go check out this video that I've made, which explains everything. 
Honestly guys, outside of the Ahsoka series, I don't really expect to see surviving clones in live action, but that would be a wonderful surprise if it does happen. And as you can see, even though it's not many, a few major clones did survive past episode 6. Now I also just want to say it's worth addressing the Bad Batch. We don't know where their future lies, some of them might survive all the way up to the Ahsoka series, or they might die in a future season of the show, we simply do not have a clue. So if you're wondering why I didn't include Tech, Echo, Hunter, Wrecker or Cross hair, that's why. And while I think Omega is going to have a long future in the Star Wars universe, just like Boba Fett, while she is a clone, she's not a clone trooper. So just a little word on that. I also should say that clone troopers and the effects they had in the galaxy lasted a lot longer than the Clone Wars themselves. Clone troopers fulfilled their purpose at the end of the Clone Wars, and while they were quickly replaced by the Imperial Stormtroopers, some clones were very much still alive. And as I mentioned in this video, there are only a handful of canon ones. In Legends, we have people like Abel1707, TK622, and Click. But as I say, there's no indication that those stories are going to be brought into canon. So it's best for me to address those that are canon and have a good chance of being addressed at a later date. I think it would be a massive missed opportunity if we don't see clones in The Mandalorian or its spin-offs. Collectively, in spite of being duplicates, the story of some clones are some of the most fascinating across the saga. A mixture of strong-mindedness, the question of free will, and of course, a lot of tragedy sprinkled in. Some of these survivors deserve their time in the live-action spotlight, especially those we're more familiar with, like Captain Rex, Wolf, and Cutler Quain. And even in regards to The Bad Batch, even though Omega is the character who seems the most likely, a continuation of the stories of some of the other members further down the timeline would definitely make for an incredible action-packed series. I could certainly imagine Echo in particular being a very interesting addition to the Ahsoka series. His history in the Clone Wars and then becoming a member of Clone Force 99 is not only very unique, but he's a remarkably nuanced and underrated character. That would translate perfectly in a live-action series helmed by Dave Filoni. In terms of what we know about clones in live action, we do know that they did a test filming during production for The Mandalorian Season 2, where Captain Rex's helmet was used, so he is on Filoni's radar to come into live action, it's just a question of when. As for these other characters, if they're not explored in live action, then maybe The Bad Batch and any future animated series is going to address where they ended up. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, did you enjoy this list? If so, give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one.